I hope everyone's having a great Easter because for me, um, I'm not really feeling too well. Today I woke up, I didn't really sleep well. I'm probably going to go to sleep after this video because, um, yeah, not really feeling too well. But um, I think I think I'm good. It's not nothing that serious, but um, it's just been a, a crazy from last night until today. Barely got any sleep. Just been kind of nuts. Uh, so if you guys took time out of your day to watch this video, I do appreciate it. if you didn't trust me. I you guys gotta it's the holiday. You know, I decided to make a video today. I figured I'd put something out today, whether you see it tonight, tomorrow, whatever the case may be. So I hope you guys enjoy your Easter with your families and uh, definitely enjoy everything that's going on. Um, with everything you're doing. Um, but I want to go over uh, the linebacker position a little bit and um, what we truly know of what we have right now and is it good enough? Uh, do you go into the draft? Do you check out some of these undrafted free agents after the draft is over? It's a lot of different things going on and obviously a position that the Eagles don't necessarily favor <laughs> when it comes to drafting. So we're getting into all that stuff and uh, let's do it up. Yo, 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 what is going on, guys? I hope you're having a fantastic day. So is this going <coughs> to be the year um, where the Eagles draft a linebacker high? Um, do the Eagles need an upgrade right now? I kind of look at the linebacker core right now, and it, it's a fresh core right now. It, it is because, you, you know, Kaiser White didn't come back. T.J. Edwards didn't come back. Um, you know, two guys that really couldn't cover. Um, you know, uh, good tacklers, but... You know, for the scheme that Gannon wanted, it just just didn't have the right players at linebacker. I don't. I don't think. I don't think they were meant for how they were being used. Um, and I take that into Gannon's kind of thing, where you know, it's just when the adjustments aren't made and your linebackers are getting killed by tight ends or or whatnot, uh, it, it's a problem. I'm not saying that T.J. Edwards was a bad player. Kaiser White wasn't a bad player. I thought they played pretty well. I thought I thought T.J. Edwards. You know, T.J. Edwards was undrafted. Um, and was never really used when Jim Schwartz was here. Showed a lot of flash, and then, you know, Nick came in, and, um, you know, he started to get more praise, you know, which was a great thing. But when you really look at it right now, it's a lot of unknown right now. It really is. I mean, even the Kobe Dean, you draft him in the third round, the rumors around the draft last year was, oh, his – um, he had a really bad shoulder, and all these, you know, false rumors were coming out, and, you know, he – probably should have been an earlier pick and I understand everybody kind of worries about you know N'Kobe Dean's size you know can't tackle tight ends can't tackle um you know big running backs um you know I I think that's false I think there's a lot that we could see right now but we haven't seen anything yet we've seen flash but we haven't seen anything and I don't really take back. I didn't think that Kobe Dean was going to get playing time last year because there was so much in front of him and the Eagles really brought in, you know, what I mean, the, the past, you know, the you know, the past year, you know, year and a half, two years, they've really tried to put some bodies at the linebacker core to see if there was anything promising. Um Nicobe Dean is just a big unknown. You know, he was in the linebacker room with Nick Rallis, really trying to sponge everything up. Um, and every time the Eagles were up by two, three touchdowns, he would get some defensive playing time, and he really showed a lot in his coverage and his tackling. Even in preseason last year, when you know there was like a, a running backs running right behind the fullback in the hole, and like Nicobe Dean is blowing that play up with his physicality. Um, even some of the tackles, you know, he had a tackle on Derrick Henry. He had some coverage. I mean, he, he got he was able to play defense in a few games when we were up by some scores here, which was pretty good. Um, you know, full-time special teamer, obviously. And, you know, you bring in Nicholas Morrow, too, this year, where now you have a, Desha uh, a Sean Desai type guy and what he likes to run in his, um, whether it's, I don't think he's going to run base 3-4 the whole time, but similar to what Gannon does, but likes to add maybe another linebacker or two um, and get some guys in coverage. And I think you ha now have the total opposites of, the opposites of Edwards and Kaiser White with two coverage guys. Which I think the Kobe Dean and Nicholas Morrow are more of a balance because they could do both. Uh, but like I said, the Kobe Dean is yet to be seen this year, and I'm not going to get too. I'm excited about it, but 
we have to be in the realization that we haven't seen the guy play yet, and we just have to be realistic. I'm not saying he's going to be a bust or anything like that, but I don't get my hopes up too high for it. I always thought they maybe had to add another body in there because really when you look at it, besides Nicholas Morrow that I think is very underrated, um, you know, he was uh, he got injured two years ago. He was out the whole entire year. I think it was a toe injury or something like that. Um, but last year he played all, all 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 snaps for the Bears. Bears was the worst team in the NFL last year, and you know he may had over 116 tackles. You know, and when you have 116 tackles, you know probably a lot of those tackles were on positive yardage. But the guy can shoot the gap. The guy can do. Uh, guy can cover. The guy, I mean, Nicholas Morrow was a safety turn linebacker coming into the league. You know, a, a while ago. So, and he's a savvy vet at 27. He's our oldest linebacker right now at 27 years old, which is really good. You know what I mean? Um, you know, we had chances this year to go get some um, other linebackers, maybe Bobby Wagner that was top 10 for tackles for loss last year or something like that. There, there was, I didn't really know there was a lot of free agent linebackers really out there this past year. I really wasn't even looking at it because I think with the Eagles defensively, what us fans were kind of looking at was kind of retaining our players. We really weren't looking at new faces, but... I had a feeling that either Edwards or Kaiser White would have left. I didn't know if both of them were going to leave. I thought one of them would. Um, and I thought T.J. Edwards was going to get the most money out of it. You know what I mean? With with some of these linebackers. I mean, Davion Taylor was a really good... I don't know. Davion Taylor had was very up and down because when he got here, he was injured and... Um, he had a really good 2021 year paired up with TJ Edwards. And then he just, he had the knee injury and then he kind of just fell off after that and then came into last off season and got hurt again. Davion Taylor just can't be trusted with, um, his injuries and, you know, and, and sometimes those injuries can make you worse over the years. And he's probably one of those players that's just never going to get better because he can't stay healthy or it drops his skill level to down a peg or two. I don't know. Davion Taylor, I thought, was a monster in 21. It was like week 10, 11. We had the bye week, um, messed up his knee. And it really messed everything up. You know what I mean? It messed up the linebacker core. Obviously, we had Alex Singleton. And it just, it was a total mess. It was, it was a real mess. So, um, you know, Sean Bradley's a pure special teamer full time. I mean, there's really nothing much there. Linebacker. Pa Patrick Johnson can play defensive end to outside linebacker. And he's, eh, you know, like, I don't think much of him either. So, I mean... You got some guys out there. That, would the Eagles actually put another body? I think the Eagles need a desperate body there. Because, like I said, I think Nicholas Morrow is underrated, but I just don't know. I, I have a feeling of what he's going to give us. But I, there's nothing, like I said, there's nothing promising about it. N'Kobe Dean, there's nothing promising. It's promising, but we have to, the realization is we haven't seen the guy play. So, like I said, N'Kobe Dean is awesome. His name, you know, his, when people say his name, we get excited. But we got to see it. I got to see it with my own two eyes. It might take more than training camp. It might take more than joint practices. It might take more than preseason games. It, it's probably going to take me seeing him in an actual game um, as our starting middle linebacker, and that's probably what it's going to be. I mean, even Miles Jack is actually out there right now, and he hasn't been signed yet. I don't know why, why the Steelers just let him go. I'm not, you know, he was a former second-round pick from the Jags. He's had, an, he's had some injury history, but... Is there something wrong with him? Our team's not signing him for a specific reason. Is, is he being too? Um, is he being too pick? You know, being too specific on where he wants to go, or is he one of those players that's going to wait till after the draft, which he's going to find a spot where he could start? You know what I mean? So I'm not really sure what's going on with Miles Jack, but I wouldn't mind bringing an extra body in for cheap if that's what it's going to take, and just get somebody in here because I don't think the free agent market for the linebackers. I don't think there's really anybody left, or I don't think from the start of free agency there was really anybody that was considered that much available where the Eagles weren't going to pay a lot of money because you know they weren't going to spend a lot of money on the linebacker, or uh, you know they just don't spend money at that position at all a lot. Um, you know what I mean? Unless it's in house and they have somebody that can play, they'll extend them, but. Uh, you're not seeing big money contracts for linebackers, especially with this team going forward. It's just not going to happen. So, Miles Jack's still out there. Or do they do something else? And, you know, do they really go into the draft and draft a linebacker to, with, with, within, the, within the first three rounds of the draft? I, I don't even know if they even do that. Even, like, getting a guy like Jack Campbell or, like, some of these other guys that are available. Like, I haven't looked at too many linebackers this year because I just I feel like I'm wasting my time. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like... 
I feel like, you know, linebacker and obviously, you know, drafting, you know, especially linebacker. I mean, safety, I think they have more, they obviously have more value in that position um, because they've acquired players at safety and, you know, whether it's free agency or trade. Uh, But when it comes down to linebacker, it's just, I don't know what they're doing. Like, they need another guy because I don't trust what's behind, you know, Nicholas Morrow and Nicobe Dean. I don't trust... I don't trust some of these other guys staying healthy or at least playing the part of being that uh, that next man up type guy that's going to take care of business. That's that's what I'm kind of, um, you know, that's where I'm kind of just getting confused with it and really not even confusion. But I think what they do is either they're going to sign somebody after the draft or whether it's a free agent, pretty much what I think they're going to do is an, uh, they're going to sign an undrafted guy. They're going to sign an undrafted free agent that's going to step in and, and compete with Nicholas Morrow and the Kobe Dean. And I think that's what they're going to do. I, I just don't even them drafting a, a linebacker in the sixth, seventh round. Like they're, they're not going to do it. It's just, even if they do it, like what, what are we going to get out of it? You know what I mean? You know, sometimes you find those gems in the sixth, seventh round. Like those are like diamonds in the rough type picks where like you're just taking a shot to see if you know what you're going to get out of this player that you draft but I don't see it really happening I don't see them drafting a guy I don't see him signing a free agent even the Miles Jack thing I don't even believe they'll do that I feel like the undrafted free agent pool that's where they're going to go um I think Nicobe Dean is is going to start this year I mean Howie um I don't even care that he was a backup this past year. And it was fine. Like there was a point where I think Kaiser white had like a little bit of an ankle injury. And then he was fine. Um, and I thought that Nicobe Dean was going to actually see some playing time last year, but he didn't, I was kind of upset. I don't wish in- injuries upon nobody, but if Nicobe Dean was going to get a shot to play and he played really well, trust me, I would have, if Nicobe Dean had a really good game and he got into a game this year as a full starter, I would have loved to see him in other games, but to look at the whole entire situation itself, I think they should add another body. I don't think it's enough and I don't think they're going to draft one. I think the undrafted free agent pool is going to be the place where you're going to get it done. So, um, you know, it's just an opinion guys. Like I haven't looked at a lot of guys in this draft linebacker wise. I just think it's a waste of time. That's just me. And because I look at how many times they hit on that position, they already hit on it once. Um, I don't think I don't know if they have a plan to where they're going to draft a defensive end this year that could play outside linebacker. You know, to you know what I mean. So I, there could be another plan where they could, they could draft a defensive end. You know, between these two first round picks, maybe and and use them as an outside linebacker and, a, and an edge rusher. So I'm not really sure what's going to happen here, but I like the room. There's just, like I said, there's no concrete evidence that it's going to be solid. There's no, there's nothing telling me that N'Kobe Dean's going to be good. There's nothing telling me that Nicholas Morrow's going to be good. But I like the signings a lot, and I think they will play good. But we have to see it. Two eyes, got to see it. And and that's what it is. Like, N'Kobe Dean especially. And I think he's flashed so much, too. It's really hard for me to say that he's not going to do anything. Uh, but I'm hope I'm hope I'm I'm wrong. I, I really do hope I'm wrong about it. I hope that he just explodes, gets a lot of attention because now you're you redshirted him for one year. You got him for three more years, so you got some time with Nicobe Dean to see what he could do. I think he learned a lot last year, um, and he even had some interviews last year to this year. You know, from you know sitting in the linebacker room, sponging everything up, and with Nick Rallis and doing his thing. You know what I mean? I had no issue with him. You know, he t- and and he. He wasn't, you know, begging for playing time. He wasn't, you know, he was willing to sit back there and learn and be a part of that group. And he had some playing time this year. You know, he did not a lot of snaps, but he got into some games, which I was pretty happy about. So um, there are options out there. Miles Jack is just one. The draft is another. I'd be shocked even the first three rounds, first four rounds, if they end up getting some fourth, fifth, sixth round picks. I, I just... I don't think they even make a move. Maybe a sixth or a seventh. I think they'll take one, but they don't want to put too much into that position right now. But, you know, by next year when you have these, like, 13 picks, whatever, these four extra comp picks plus an extra second rounder, uh, they might have to draft a guy. You know what I mean? Nicholas Morrow's on a one-year deal. You know, I know you want to stay cheap at the position. I get it 100%, but you can't do it for a long time. I feel like you got to put some type of money or – not even put money into it, like 
go draft a linebacker high. This year might not be the right year. Maybe it's more of a next year type deal with this team. So not really sure, but you know, we'll see what the what the linebacker room is going to look like. And and obviously, the, obviously, health is another thing. You don't got anybody behind these guys with Nicholas Morrow and Nicobe Dean. What are you going to do? You're down to nobody, really, when you think about it. So, um, you know, I, I like Sean Bradley, I like his attitude. I just, I just don't think he's going to pan out as a full time linebacker. I just don't see it. Um, and obviously, Patrick Johnson. I don't even know who else is even there. Kyron Johnson's there. I guess he's got good speed. But are they going to want to use Kyron Johnson more as an outside linebacker or or defensive end? I don't know. I really liked him from Kansas. You know, he he's really quick on a nice first step. Problem is. He was injured last year. He got injured, so never really had a chance. Um, and it's hard, man, to get playing time when you're injured. It's just what it is. A practice, especially a practice squad guy gets moved up, or you know, that's what happens. So, oh, that guys, it's pretty much it. I mean, you know, give me your take on the linebacker core in general. I like Nicholas Morrow. I think he's going to play really good this year. And the Kobe Dean, obviously, I'm expecting him to do big things. Um, and is it fair for me to say I expect him to do big things when he didn't play last year? I don't know, but he flashed way too much to tell me that he's not going to do anything next year. You know, so I'm hoping uh, I'm hoping I get this thing right with him. And I hope we find at least at least if one guy pans out, I'll be happy. But if both can pan out, you know, um, you know, uh, being a nice little duo there at linebacker, I'm I'd be pretty good about it. But like I said, I think they should add another body. I don't think it's done yet. And, um, you know, give me your take on the Kobe Dean, Nicholas Morrow. Do you think they draft a linebacker within the first three rounds? Do you think he's more, you know, they'll they'll uh, get a sixth, seventh round linebacker? Or do you think they will go in the undrafted free agent pool for a linebacker that has a lot of upside, um, you know, and, um, you know, learn, you know, so. You know, so that's what you're in the undrafted free agent pool. That's what you're going to get. You're not going to get anybody that's going to walk in there and just come. You know, you might get a competition. Uh, uh, you know, you get a guy that wants to compete, a guy that really fights hard for his job. You know, who knows what you're going to have down the road, you know? So, um, yeah, other than that, um, if you guys haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel. Please like the video as well. If you guys haven't checked out the Philly uh, Shakedown merch, Draft 5 merch for the draft, check in the description below and pre-order the Draft 5 merch. Do appreciate it so much. Um, and everybody, enjoy your Easter. If you made it through this whole video, I do appreciate it. You didn't have to. Um, I just don't feel good. I want to put something out for you guys, and I want to talk about it. So um, that's the linebacker core for the Eagles. You guys enjoy the rest of your Easter Sunday. Enjoy your families, and I'll see you on the next one. Shakes what up, follow slide. Peace out, guys. Peace.